بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Yeah, to, to tell you the truth, um, I'm still not past the assumption, past buying that there has to be a creator, you know. It's not an assumption, it's, it's yeah. a conclusion that we've made. If you have a universe today, you have the creator for this universe. It's not an assumption, this is a conclusion. If you, if you know the creation here, you and I exist, then you have no choice but to accept that there is a creator of this creation, this universe, this reality. And that is a creator who has no other cause prior to that. It's not an assumption. Well, what I mean by assumption is that like, because it's impossible to know. What is impossible to know? If it was um, a natural process. Of what? Just, if, if things have just been happening. If the universe existed always, are you saying things come by naturally? Let me give you a scenario again. Do, 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 are you still studying or working? Uh, studying. Science? Uh, law. Law. Okay. Imagine you go into a printing press and you see a computer with all these um, keyboards with A, B, C and on so on, right? No programming. You have the computer. Would you then expect this keyboard automatically typing itself by itself with no agency, no willing agency, produce software to make a legal textbook that you are studying. It will never happen. Because there is no agency with will to say, I need to program it or I need to type in, in a word processor, for example. It will never happen. You go into your kitchen, you want to make nice pasta or nice food, whatever you eat. Whatever you eat. The food is there, but not cooked yet. To cook your food, you need the ingredients to come together with spices or whatever, with water, with heat, you have to make it, right? If you sat there and you expect it to happen, it will never happen. These ingredients will not come by itself yeah. and then make your beautiful curry. Delicious, right? Biryani. It will never happen. Yeah. This universe it will not, never transform itself to this state. Which one? Do you want to read it? Yeah, it's talking about the expansion of the universe, for example. There's another thing. I mean, I didn't want to give you examples of examples for you to reflect on. For the origin of the Quran, the Quran says God created the, the heavens with his own hands and he's expanding it. Yeah. He's expanding it. So he's the one who's made it and he's expanding it. The Greeks used to believe the universe is not expanding, it's static. Today, we know for sure, according to our scientific realization of our data, that the universe is actually expanding. The Quran talks about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are many examples. The Quran talks about this already. So, this information from the Quran, you have to rationally explain. Could it be Prophet Muhammad, he just guessed it? Could it be his people who guessed it? There's a limitation of guesswork. I can guess something to happen and the probability of something to happen is 50-50, one in two, right? One in two. If there's two situations, if I want to guess both of them to be correct, it's one in two times one in two is one in four. If it's three situations, it just multiplies by by one and two, right? So as you can see, like half times half time, it goes on. If you do the maths, if I want to get 20 situations right and right all the time, I have a one in a million chance to get it right and one a, a million chance minus one to get it wrong. The Quran gives more than 20, more than 40 instances and it gets everything right. So from this data analysis, you would know this is not guesswork. 
because you now have one in a billion trillion chance to get it right and billion trillion chance to get it wrong but Quran gets it all right so the probability of that this was done by guesswork is out of the question we can rule it out so the Quran gets this information correctly from what source not from guesswork not from a man in a desert who didn't know how to read and write let alone talk about knocking stars where did he get it from the Quran says it's from God so you now need to struggle within yourself where can this information be this information cannot be from the Romans and the Byzantines and the Persians from the Arabs from any other from even from the from the Indus Valley civilization from from Asia from China anywhere no one knew about these things the Quran gives us information so now we are struggling to explain the source of this information if you now you find a manual how to build the next generation of iPhone you don't you won't expect this happened by chance in a factory explosion and then the, the book came out you would never believe in it you would never in your lifetime would accept this is a product of an explosion and a printer produced that book because this information is so precise right so when it comes to God, do you have to answer it? Oh, no, it's just no, no. When it comes to the Creator and this universe, this universe couldn't be always there and it just everything just happens without a volitional agency behind. There has to be a volitional agency which transforms one to the other, makes all these laws that is present in our universe. Our universe is made and constructed in such a way that if the sun and the earth were slightly different in a distance if the earth's angle was slightly less then the life would not exist you'd find out about this discuss in the literature called the fine-tuning argument yeah the universe is fine-tuned in such a way for our existence our life yeah our life is like fine-tuned some people say oh like oh we have billions of other universes maybe this is one of them a lucky lucky guess well, yeah, I guess even the assumption, well, even the um, statement that it's a lucky guess doesn't really work with me because we don't know if this is a good universe or not, you know what I mean? There could be something where things work better which we can't comprehend, you know what I mean? Yeah, but even like, the one we're in is just what we know. Right. But the fine-tuning thing kind of assumes that this is finely tuned. This could actually be the chaotic one, and there could but, be... Hmm? No, no, it's fine. This fine-tuning yeah. is what we observe, right? We, we observe chaos and we observe order. So it's not that we observe everything. We, we don't arbitrarily say something is chaotic yeah. and something is order. We do observe patterns. We do observe order. When you read a nice piece of literature, these are letters ordered together. That's not chaotic. So your position may be in a state not like this. This universe is always there and it just, there's no conscious self-aware entity which volitionally changed into all of these things but we can demonstrate examples of examples that without a volitional agent you would not expect this kind of transformation to happen so we have to rationally accept that there was a willing volitional agent it's difficult for us to accept that because acceptance means there is an agent who is self-aware like our, our awareness who exists forever I don't exist forever by something that exists forever, something that's greater than I. The reason atheists struggle, which they won't tell you, but psychoanalysis will, will reveal to you that the reason why many, many atheists would not accept God is because they cannot fathom this understanding that someone is greater than them. The ego prevents people to accept someone greater than I? No. The fact that you, when you realize there's someone greater than you is a realization of your humility and your, your, your real state. When you know you don't know, it's not being in a bad state, it's actually in a good realization. If I don't know something, then I'm actually in a better position than when I was confused. Yeah? Do you understand yeah. the point? That's my point. That's why I said from the start that like, we just don't know. And it's kind of... But we do know, as we yeah. explained. We do well, that's know. My thing, I'm saying I just don't know. Um, As we've explained, yeah. we do know. To know more about God is when you read the Quran and the Quran tells you, God tells you in the Quran who He is. 
There are certain things your mind can speculate and reason to know about the infinite, but you can't know all of it. You can't comprehend and know everything by speculation. It has to be given to you, sent to you, or revealed to you, or mentioned to you what it is. There's no way you can know otherwise. Yeah? When the infinite tells the finite, the finite then is aware about the infinite characteristics, all about its characteristics. That is why we say there's a limit of what the mind needs to do to know our Creator. And then once you know that this is the guidance from a Creator, you submit and you accept. That's the rule. Because if you want to know everything through your mind, why do you consider your mind is able to know everything in the first place? Your mind could be a limited thing, your brain or its function or something external to the brain, which is the mind. Maybe that's its limitation. It cannot know more than that. But what it can know, it can make decisions about this reality that there is a God, there is a creator who created us for a purpose and is not someone who is totally distant from us, but sends revelation and guidance throughout, constantly, has sent the final messenger with the final guidance. And for us now is to really reawaken our mind to investigate and accept by conviction. That's all we have to do. So when you investigate and you make sense to you, you accept it. That's all. You don't need to be this kind of um, saying, I still don't know, because there are many things that your mind will be limited to knowing, but what your mind does know can confirm to you that there is a creator, and this creator has created you and I for a reason, and we have to fulfill that purpose. Yeah. I guess the way I see it is like this. So we've got the universe. Yeah. And if God created the universe, then he exists outside of it. Yeah. And our human senses and human like capabilities like you know like empirical mm. anything that's empirical that can be measured yeah that's what science is science is our tools for measuring what's inside the universe yeah but anything that exists outside science cannot science can't that's why like science it can explain like why volcanoes do what they do Correct. because they exist inside yeah but there's no scientific experiment that you can do to prove or disprove god exactly that exists outside the universe. Absolutely. So God's, excuse me, God's existence is not within the perimeters of science. Science yeah. cannot answer that question. So that's, that's why, why that's yeah, even why. like people who are religious who try to prove the science are just as well, because it's just like. They don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah. So, it's not a scientific question. Yeah. So that's, so that's, that's why we why use like, reason and intellectual inquiry. Yeah. To arrive at the conclusion. So science is one tool to understand our natural world. But we have to use other tools, the tools of reason, the faculty of intellect, yeah. reason, and using reason, we do know for sure that there is a creator. There's no way around it. Yeah, I guess maybe just actually, because I'm just assuming, no, I'm not assuming, I keep saying that, it's not what, yeah. I mean something else when I say that. Just that um, all human being like capable of thinking, is limited to what's inside the universe. So, whether or not there's something outside that created us, or maybe there's more, or maybe there's like several degrees of creation, is um, we aren't able to figure that out. So, I accept that I exist inside the universe. And so anything, like what you said, like I don't actually know if my parents are my parents or not. But that's possible to figure out because that's a problem inside the universe. But um, that's one of the reasons yeah. God because sends God lives outside yeah, yeah. to help you will to, to, to cut the chase. Yeah. One of the reasons God sends in the universe his guidance, his proof with a messenger within this universe so that we can't say, oh, there is no God outside because once you have the agency of God, a, a human messenger, human prophet, verified, then you know that he's been sent by the one outside. Because you need something from inside to make your conclusions. Yeah. So when God sends a messenger inside this universe, gives his message inside the universe, you can then connect to outside, yes, now I'm sure. Yeah. That's the only way you have a connection. Otherwise you can't connect to what's outside. 
And that's why God doesn't simply leave us in our confusion. He raises prophets and messengers from within this universe. Yeah, I just think, because first of all, there are many options. There are many different people saying, because you've got two questions, right? There's, is there a God or not? Yeah. And then once you decide there is, you've then got several different religions to then go through one by one. So... It's an easy process as well. Yeah. There are people who believe in God and people who believe in one God, people who believe in multiple gods. The one who believes in multiple gods obviously gone astray because there can only be one God. So you can start with trying to verify the message from this one God where it exists by looking at monotheistic religions. There are not many, right? You examine each one and then you come to the conclusion. So you can examine Judaism, you can examine Christianity, and you can examine Islam. Many others came after Islam, which are imitations of Islam or a bit of mixture here and there. Some religion are composition of writers of Hindus and Muslims and others, like Sikhism, for example. They are Muslim writers of their book. Okay? So you know, okay, this can be safely let aside because these are man-made compositions of together to make a some kind of harmonistic way of life, right? If you consider Judaism, Christianity and Islam, you analyze each one and you will automatically see with clear conviction where the truth is. Islam says God sent prophets and messengers to children of Israel. Moses was a messenger, prophet. So was Jesus sent to the children of Israel, Bani Israel, okay? But what happened was people forgot some part of the message and introduce falsehood into the message and that's why you see the corrupted nature of these religions at present. So Islam explains the existence of other religions, why they are. So either you have a pristine message of God intact in its purity still present or it's not. And the Quran says no. What has happened is mankind has corrupted the messages of God and what remains are remnants of the original message with truth and falsehood mixed together. That's why there are truths in the message within the Judeo-Christian religion and there are also falsehoods that are introduced within it. So if you examine in this light, I can give you an example, I mean, it will sound unfair if there is no one to defend the Christian and Judaic religion, but this is what I do most of the time with the Christians and the Jews, demonstrate to them why there are corruption within their books, within their scripture. So when you examine the Quran, on the other hand, if you don't find any errors and mistakes and it makes sense to you and it proves to you it's from God because the information it gives, the prophecies it talks about, the historical information that it provides with you know, you know, utmost accuracy, then it gives you that basis of belief which is now I am intellectually convinced that this is the work of or product of or the guidance from the Creator. It cannot be the product of a human being from that time or any other time. Or it cannot be product of anyone else other than God. So this is how you can be convinced of it because you can't falsify it. There's two ways of doing it. Convincing without doing any falsification test or falsi trying to falsify it and you can't falsify it. Then you, you are submitting to it that yes, it has to be. Yeah. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Reflect and do your more research, more thinking, more questioning and convince finally where the truth is. Truth, look, the true reality, the truth is not somewhere like it's so obscure. It will stand out. You just need to have that spirit in your heart for the love for the truth and you will see it. Some people see it, but because of something they have in their heart, because, oh, what if now I accept then I have all these responsibilities? Or what if I accept this truth then I have to, I lose my job, I lose my business, I lose my girlfriend. The consequential things stop people accepting the truth. We have to have these feelings in our heart, this approach in our heart, that if the truth is wherever it is, I will accept it. The love for the truth. And this is what Islam wants, that you want to submit submission to Allah. There are about seven conditions. You will, you will learn about it when, you, when you're going to submit. One is one of sincerity, that I am going to sincerely say there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. With all sincerity, with all love, and with knowledge and so on. Right? Conditions. So that I don't just simply blindly believe in things, but I knowingly, humbly, willingly, convincingly accept what it is. So these are the things that is for you to, 
to, to, to take your journey. Okay? Because I think you already have someone Muslim in your family. What you need to do is get some assistance and help. If you have any questions, I'm yours in your assistance with all my little ability that I have and little knowledge that I have. And I have our friends and you know colleagues and scholars all around who can help you and assist you in your journey. But what's required first and foremost is your, your willingness to participate in this journey, your persistence to know the truth and your position to accept that truth. Because if you do that, if you have that approach, God guides those who are sincere. God guides those who seek Him. One thing I will tell you, there is a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu is a hadith Qudsi, in which Prophet Sallallahu said, God said that if a servant approaches me one step, I approach to him ten step. If he comes to me walking, I come to him, go to him running. So for you to understand that if you want to know God and accept who and you know, you know, surrender to him eventually. If you take one step, he will take 10 steps to you, meaning he'll make it easier for you. And Allah says in the Quran, whoever Allah wants to guide, he opens their heart, their chest. It becomes so easy. Yeah? And whoever want, Allah wants to misguide because they want to be guided, it makes their heart constricted. So if you are really one who's seeking the truth and, and, and willingness to be guided, Allah will open up the guidance to you and it will be easier for you. But you need to have certain things to do. I mean, there are conditions. You need to start abandoning things which God doesn't like. Don't do things which God doesn't like, like don't lie, don't commit oppression, don't commit un injustice, um, don't cheat, and so on. Be one who avoids all of these vices and upholds the true virtues of honesty, being upright, being kind, being truthful, being merciful, being just, being fair, then you will realize it's easy because the heart to accept guidance, it needs to be a, a receptacle which is ready to receive guidance. To give you a scenario that I used to give um, with my friends, always an example. If somebody wants to drink because they're thirsty and they give you a glass upside down, can you give water? It'll be so difficult. But the moment you give water, the water is going to roll down. You have to turn it round in the right way. We have to have our heart in the right way to receive guidance, which is what? To go away from all of these things, pride and arrogance and being stubborn and make it receptive to the divine guidance. And if you do that and you're ready for it, you're sincere, it will be so easy to receive that guidance. And Allah promised that He will guide those who are in this position. So it is not a difficult task. But it is a task that needs right approach. It is a task that needs one's sincerity, very importantly. Yeah? So if you're sincere and you're willing, Alhamdulillah, I will meet you again as a Muslim, not too far away, not too long away. Right? Ask questions um, and get your answers. Yeah? You take care.